It's Linda McPhee's workshop. Here's Linda. You heard that music, so you know it's time for Crazy Linda, and welcome to our workshop. You know, this is a new show or a new series, and we've changed our environment. We've brought you right into where I've been working. In fact, this workshop's been going for 25 years, so you know that I love to sew and I love to create. And I have a friend here that I've known for about 25 years, and it's Karen. And hi, Karen. It's hi, Linda. You. Karen is as crazy about sewing as I am, and you sew all the time. I and, do. Yeah, I do. And I'm so Almost delighted. Almost every day. Yeah. Karen, in fact, this is how you get to work for me. You owe me so much money that you get right. to do part-time right. work so that, <laughs> so that you can. But I think it's amazing with your handicap. Your one arm is really not functional, is it? No. no. And so you sew and cut uh, and sew, do yes. everything. In fact, she does it way faster than all the people that... I've done it for a long time. Yes, you have. You have. <laughs> what we're going to do today, and this is one of my favorite, and I know you've done it on a coat. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of doing a positive negative. Love anything ethnic, and I yes. love this. So you see what we've done here is that whatever spaces, I'm a gal that doesn't like to waste anything. So whatever yes, was know. cut out here <laughs> has to go over here. And whatever holes, so it just goes back and forth. So there's really no waste. And, of course, the design ties together because it's all the same elements. Right. So it's kind of, I think, a neat idea. So let's talk about it. Shall we show, okay. show our viewers how to do this one? Any vest pattern would work. This is one of our classic vests, basically, but anything kind of this shape would work. We did it out of wool melton, and wool melton is a wonderful fabric to do because, as you know, when you cut it out... It doesn't fray. It doesn't fray. So, no. I mean, we don't want to have something that we have to do a lot of satin stitching around. Right. So, so we've cut it out of wool melton. We've cut two red ones. We've cut two black ones for the back. Right. And then we've cut an extra black one for the front. And so I sort of said, okay, let's let's just play around with some ideas of shapes. And if you want to draw these shapes, we have a pattern for yeah, them. Yeah, we have, have a pattern. To, yes. so you don't have to be yeah. too clever, but sort of arrange them however you'd like. And then I think it's important to leave yes. a border. You can make a mistake if you don't. Yes. So if you leave a border, <laughs> that way you've got something on the other one. So if I then start cutting, and I'm just going to start... Nice scissors. Well, they're applique scissors, yeah. so they work beautifully. And I would just cut, and I would be careful when I'm cutting these. Like, just don't cut a great big hole in the middle, because you want to use this piece again. Right. So you're just going to cut around all of these pieces. And you can pin them down a little bit more, or use a spray adhesive even to, to oh, hold them down. Oh, that would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to cut around all those. But, you know, that takes too long. So right. we're going to then find this one. And here it is, the same thing, and you'll notice that they've all been cut around. Right. So we now have to transfer half of it to you and half of it to there. Okay. So <laughs> shall I take the outside, and can you sort of arrange that? This is like a jigsaw puzzle. It is kind of. So there's your top. And just a minute here. Did we get this? Yeah, I think we did this wrong. There's your sleeve right ah. there. And then you can... So this is the hardest part of this the whole is, thing. This is. This is. So now I can take this middle section. So I could take all of those out. And I could take this middle section because I need, I need it. So this would go here. Uh -huh. So and I've sort of left the border around. So this can go in here like this. And then you can take all of these other pieces. You see, this is going to be our opposite design so then you can take this piece and that goes over there goes because over that's there, where it was. and then you need this one back. I need that middle one so that goes over here and so on and so on and just sort of we go back and forth and if you just sort of play and look where this was here this will go here and then these pieces will go back in it's a bit of an IQ test <laughs> but I think I think you can do it we can so that's basically what you're going to do is just figure these so let's pretend we've done that all okay Okay, then, here it is. And we've got All two opposites, together. and it's kind of because then they work together. Uh -huh. So now we have to stitch this. So shall we go and start stitching? Sure. So, you know, you could zigzag or you could straight stitch. Because this doesn't fray, we could straight stitch, but I right. like to set it up. We've got it on the 3 width and the 3.5 length. And here we go. We can just, and I've used contrasting thread. You, right, yes. You wouldn't, <laughs> you do, wouldn't this. do this normally. This is kind of a test. And when I zigzag, I like to just go on the edge and off the edge, just like this. I like zigzag because you can't miss. Yeah. And we can just... So this is a bit, I shouldn't say painful, but it's a bit tedious because then you just go round and round and round. But the wool sticks to the wool so beautifully. I'll just you take could that one dime. 
uh, use some spray adhesive too, couldn't you? Sure you could. Pins or whatever. So you can see, so on and so on. So I'll just cut my thread. This cuts the thread, you know it's that. It's lovely, <laughs> lovely. So that's, I mean, that's really, if you did a good job, you mm -hmm. probably could kind of leave that. But I, I think we're, we're smarter to, to just use a matching thread or an invisible thread. So you would go all the way around this one and all the way around that one. Okay. So then we have to put this together. So we have a back. And here's the back. And the nice thing about this pattern, it, it leaves you that nice little V in the back, right. which is kind of neat. Right. So you're basically going to sew right sides together, stitch it, and then top stitch. And we've done it in matching thread, which is kind of mean, but that's you're going to have a nice flat edge there. So we'll put the shoulders together. There's really not too much. As you know with vests, there's not a whole lot of ways you can mess this up. That's right. <laughs> shoulder to shoulder and underarm to underarm. Yeah. And again, I would just press the seams flat and top stitch them on both sides. So once we get to that stage, then we've just got to put the fold-over braid around. So if you look at this, oh, I love there this. is a fold-over braid. And this is a neat, neat braid because it, it actually is already folded and it's wool. So you can just sandwich it mm -hmm. over whatever edge you want. So there's a couple of different ways that I've always liked to do it. In fact, this is probably the, the way that most people do. Top stitch that from this side, this right. being the wrong side. Right, yes. Then flip this over to the right side and then top stitch this so that your top stitching on the right side will look good. So, mm -hmm. so that is one way. And you have to use the thread to match this. Then. Yes, sure, or invisible. Oh, right. The other one you could do, and we did this in contrasting because I kind of like this too, and mm -hmm. if you're kind of wanting to do it quickly, flip this over like this and just zigzag. So you can catch two sides at <laughs> well, once. Well, you know you're going to yeah. hit something. <laughs> you're you're going to hit something. So zigzagging is great. The other thing that I do is I often hand stitch it. And I know if I have to sit in a car and... and be dry. I'm not not when I'm driving. Oh, when I'm oh. not driving, right. I'll just come like this and I'll do a back stitch, and then go straight ahead. And you know, it's sort of like basting it, mm -hmm. but it holds it on really well. So that's that, that's a good way to do it as well. So there's sort of different ways to do that. But you'll notice that this one's got buttons all yes. over it. And it's kind of fun to put buttons because yes, they I just love kind of those make buttons. it alive. So come on back, because I'm going to show you that we can do buttons by machine. And I hate sewing buttons on by hand. Well, when there's so many of them, you sort of think, okay, so we've got our machine set up for buttons, and we've taken the feed dogs off, so we'll put the button on, and I think I want to just be safe. Just put my presser foot down, and just make sure. Okay, let me go up again, and then... Normally, you'd take the foot off. Because, okay. Okay. Let me just get this thing set up here. In fact, maybe if I put my that put needle down, down and then put my needle down. Ah. And then let's just make sure that this is going to hit. Uh oh. There, I think. You just have to make sure that you're going to hit this both. I'm always scared I'm going to break the needle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so now I'm in business. Oh, great. Well, isn't that easy? And. And, and that cuts the thread for you. So you have to just fiddle just a little to get the whole thing lined up. But there's your needle and there's your, your cut thread and we're done. Now, how do you decide where to put the buttons? You can just put them anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'd say. Anyway, we're out of time and we've had a lot of fun, but we've got a great segment coming up. So uh, you'll want to see it. promised you good stuff and and I found it and I found Cindy Hoppy and she's been a friend for a while because as soon as I saw this I thought you're a woman after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> so what got you going in making things like this? Well it's a long process that started way back in a secondhand store in Ontario when I was at a class and I needed something and all I had was crochet hook and yarn. Uh -huh. So I bought an old suit, tore it apart and made a vest and that sort of got me down the road to what I'm doing today. Right. Which is fearless patching. <laughs> it is. It <laughs> or is random patching or drive-by patching. Totally fearless. When it. you look at this, I'm just delighted with this vest. And, and you then said this was 
I mean, a lot of you out there would say this is garbage, and men might take this to the garbage. And oh, don't do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> In fact, you said here are your keyboard elements, and I'm very big on keyboards. I love to play the piano, so. There is the keyboard. You, you've done all these little elements. And you say there's enough in here to... To begin maybe two or three other projects. Yes. So, uh, so I started with a friend's vest because she and her other friend were playing in a, in a musical group, mm -hmm. Strawberry Jam. So okay. you've got red, you've so got you green, and you have piano keys. And they're a great uh, element. Mm -hmm. As you see, here's the real piano keys. And here's their negative counterparts. So you've oh, got yeah. sort of some action happening oh, that way. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, let's see some of the other things that you've done. And Karen, you managed to find yourself one too didn't you yes so tell us Cindy tell us about this this uh, piece came from a liberated quilt making book by Gwen Marston where you do just massive uh, chain piecing of things you don't worry about the final product you're just making patches as you can so see just, these little yes, I can see window like just... squares that are happening yeah, here yeah. and totally. I picked a pile of materials that I loved the color with I picked a bunch of ties that I thought would go and so you have squares and ties making a pinwheel pattern. But basically sort of straight lines. I mean, it's Oh, very lines. straight. I'm not a really good sewer. I'm yeah. just an intense, yeah, you, yeah, passionate yeah, exactly. sewer. I just yeah. want to get into yeah. it. And I like the way you've combined the yarn, and I think that's kind of neat. So, so we've got yarn elements in here as well. So Some of these squares have been over-dyed, and uh, some of this yarn has been hand-spun sure. and hand-dyed. So it's all related. Karen, yeah, yeah, you're just walking straight out the door, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see this one. And again, just a neat, funky little look with all different colors. Now I love this your jacket use of came from the same pile of patchwork. Did it? So you can see that there's a lot of variety in where you take Let's it, what you decide to emphasize. It looks nothing like the last one, but it's it's all the same elements. Well, you yes. know, it needed fuchsia. This yes, time. it did. Yes, fuchsia it did. was a nice yeah. break from all that natural color. That's wonderful. <laughs> now you're going out the door. Where are our models again? They've all let, taken. Oh no, Karen found another one. So I think this is rather smashing. Now this looks maybe kind of complicated, but it isn't. You've used strip piecing to create these little square bits that actually frame a piece of applique, which is just, again, old ties with could a little I, bit could of wonder I mention under this it. sort of looks like men's pants. Is that what it is? It's probably a skirt. Okay, okay, yes. but it could have been and men's pants. This was a man's jacket pocket once the, upon a time. The pocket was there and you used it? Oh, absolutely. I can't oh. possibly sew a pocket that oh, well. Oh, so my I favorite, have to use my it. favorite. <laughs> oh, lovely. Okay, and some applique and some stuff. This is stuff at its best. And its then finest. you want to pick yarn that complements what okay. you've already done. Out of here, sewing. Karen, and we'll see this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the colors, anything. In this piece, again, there's a lot of random patchwork with some over dyeing. Yeah. But this has stenciling added over oh, top. Oh, there on top. With so a fabric crayon. Is there ever any finish? You can keep going and going. Well, my problem is always, when do I stop? When do you stop? Because yeah, I sure. love more is more, yeah, I figure. Yeah. But sooner or later, you have to make and a decision And we have one more. Do we have one more? Karen, you're quick. You like this one, though. <laughs> <laughs> this, this again is uh, I see strips, lots of men's ties in here. Strips sewn together form the basis of it. And then some chain piecing of triangles here and there that come together and make diamonds okay. when they they're oh, finished. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I want to I want to do this. No question. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> I'm out of here. We've got we've got to do this. So where do we begin? You begin with your material, and here are some examples of hand dyeing and the different exciting things that can happen just with the hand dyeing. So if you find fabric that's already dyed, fine. But fine. if not, you just and a lot of this stuff I use as is. But when okay. I find some fairly neutral fabric, I take it to the dye pot. So there's nothing that's not good. Oh, it's all great. <laughs> nothing. All great. Okay, let's then take the next bag. I think this is this, this is an is interesting a, bag. This is an in process sweater. Okay, so so what? So you start with something that turns you on, like this plaid, mm -hmm. and this plaid, and oh, then you have to have some planes, right? Oh, and the men's jacket that I had the pockets from was this oh, color. Oh, is that right? So you okay. gotta add that. Yeah, so you kind of put all these colors together and kind of you say play with them on the floor or on your table that, until you're until you're blue. happy. Oh yeah. And then I like to get started sewing, so I sew some strips together. So that I've got some raw material to work. Okay, you're not with. sewing this to a base. You're actually sewing it together. It's wool. It's wonderful stuff. It's very, very uh, 
it's tough and you just go. Do you use all wool? Is that something? No, I use, this has got some rayon in and see how nicely it took the dye. It's really yes, intense. Yes, it would. Yeah, yeah. I use things that are similar weight okay. so that they don't go too screwy on you when you're finished. Something that's fairly firm and probably mm -hmm. something that doesn't fray a whole lot. Because, because these are jackets, they're outerwear yeah, and yeah. they're hardware yeah, jackets. Yeah. They wear very, very well. And I'm well. just looking to see what kind of a stitch you've used, kind of a feather stitch to put these together or, or does it, can you sew a regular well, stitch? Or? Oh yeah, I can just sew the straight stitch down but I like the actual added design elements of using some variegated rayon thread mm -hmm. and the decorative stitches that there's are in so the machine. There's so many decorative stitches and there's so many kinds of thread. Right. Fun, fun, fun. And I figure the more stuff you have in there, the more things are going to end up relating to each other in okay, the long Okay, well this obviously is not junk. This is all very valuable stuff, so we'll just put this back. I like the way this is feeling because, I mean, you know, this is workshop is, can get sort of messy and uh, it's not really messy. It's a creative frenzy is what it is. So what do we have over here? We have some pieces. Those are pieces that are in process for the next uh, project. Okay. And here are a couple of the pockets that were salvaged from a woman's suit. Okay, so you would then build a piece of fabric that's big enough for your front, right. that's big enough for your back, that's big enough for your sleeve, mm -hmm. and if you can salvage some pockets. Absolutely. So you've just taken the welt part of that and you'll add some more stuff onto that. Yeah. So that's great. And, Brilliant. Uh, yeah. I've got little bits of squares or rectangles that then would be okay you're sitting at the sewing machine and these are little triangles you just pick a corner and sew those okay let's just have a look corners. at that so you're going to then take this and put this across the corner and stitch it and then flip that Hold out it over, and then trim that trim out it, around so you'd have just press little peaks. It, trim it yeah. so you have all these little have squares these little with triangles yeah. and then you sew them together randomly you're not worried about what this is oh. because this is the beginning of the process yeah, you're not so making look, any decisions. Yeah so nothing has to match with anything this is quilt heaven Yes, this is absolutely quilt heaven. <laughs> nothing matches and you don't want it to match no not really because that's where the excitement comes sure where people is. can't take their eyes off you if you have a, a a material that's perfectly pieced, it becomes boring to And then people eye. have to watch to see that it is perfectly pieced. Yeah, We yeah, women can zoop absolutely. right in, but this way, no, this is fun. So then what are we going to do? Once we've got a front and a back and a sleeve cut out. Well, here's an example of a sleeve okay. that's finished. Now, I like to add knitting just for ease and comfort because I'm going to do and a, a knitted finish. And it's not bulky then, that's a nice... That's right. Yeah, sure. So, so how would we do that? The, the sleeve, and you can see how I've done So this the, is this section that goes the in section, here. section, okay. yeah. So you're going to add a little bit to this end and a little bit to this end. So what I do is crochet, okay. and I've made my loop, and I'm going to crochet an edge on here and add it to my... And because this is loosely woven, you can yeah. kind of stick that Get right through. Get your needle through, yeah. pull that loop through, and then you're going to add it to your knitting needle. Oh, so I see. Okay. Pull that loop through. And make another loop, and then, and now then you, can you knit. put that okay. on your needle. Or could you not continue crocheting too? I would suppose you could, but crocheting is a heavier, denser fabric that doesn't have a nice doesn't have a nice uh, oh, okay. uh, stretch okay. to okay. it. Okay. it. It gets heavy. I had my crochet period too. Oh, did you? So. Okay, so, so you've yeah, been there, I've been, been there, there, done that, and that's yeah. not the, the best. Okay, so then you're going to crochet, or I mean, you're going to crochet, so you, can you get do an crochet edge to knit. around. Yeah, yeah. that's how that works. Yes. And then to you're put the knit. loops on and to, to and knit And I would say sweater. for knitters, this is just hallelujah because, I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of knitting you do and what well, patterns and whatever. Well, you do want to echo what you've got in the body of your, uh, at least I feel that okay. you want to do okay. something that's going to echo that. So this is made up of squares and you can see I've sort picked of, a kind yeah, of a yeah. squarish pattern mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you don't want it to be too uh, Let's wild. Let's again look, and you've, you've done some stenciling on this, we won't... But get your paints out, get your stencils out. So when you get to this stage, you sort of said, well, I think we need a little bit more. It needs just something to take it over the top. Sure, so then sure. we add that final decorative element. Sure, sure. Okay, and then let's let's have a look at this one too. So This one? No, this one, I think. Okay. This, this looks quite fascinating. This is a piece that started out as a vestment for the bishop. Oh. I'm making a stole for the bishop, and of course I had all this patchwork left over. So this is I not thought, the stole for the bishop? This is not the stole for the bishop. <laughs> okay. This is the leftovers. Okay. All right, and okay. I thought, well, I'll make a shawl. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so it looks like it could have been a piece of fabric, but 
it's so exciting because all of these are different fabrics and then Absolutely. all the stitching on top. And you start each trip, each piece with a trip to Value Village, depending on what or you need wherever for Wherever you need to get some colors. stuff. In fact, get Absolutely. some donations of whoever. And stitching-wise, straight stitching, so it doesn't have to take a, it's not rocket science. It's not of. rocket science. And, you know, make sure you have a variety of thread colors there so you have a lot of action thread-wise. Mm -hmm. Here's a, a variegated thread, and there's a variegated thread. And while I was working on them, I thought, well, I don't want too much because a white on white mm -hmm. you want that to, to Let's sing. see what this looks like so this goes like this oh this is totally elegant and, and then so there's the crocheted uh, a knitted yeah, edging that's yeah, been crocheted yeah. and added on so you could do jackets you could do vests you could go oh. well you can do things for costumes you can do pariments for church Thank it's you. just Thank an you, exciting Cindy. this field. has been exciting we've got to go we're out of time but i want you people to get going and don't throw away anything, and we'll be right back, and we'll have some more fun right after that. It's one of my favorite times because it's embroidery time, and Eileen is here again, and it's great to have you. Good you, to be here. you just live and eat and sleep this stuff, and, and you do everything in embroidery. So, yes. what are we going to talk about today? Today, we're going to talk about wool felt applique. Okay. And we have a great quilt to show you that is a bright primary, really fills yes. up your walls yes, with yes. color. So the techniques here, you've done this within a hoop, I bet. Yes, these smaller designs are actually hooped embroidery. On the gar on the... On the quilt block yeah, itself, yeah. right. And then the larger designs, like the tree in the center medallion, and the vine up in the holly block, and the snowman itself, are actually done with just an applique stitch on your regular sewing machine. And then I see you've still added some wonderful little bits oh, of embroidery, yeah, and I think that's it's, good. Yeah, yeah. And I think it is a marriage. I mean, it's the same machine, so you can do big things with your buttonhole stitch, right. and then you can take and do, so mm -hmm. that, that's great. I right. Think it's, we're, we're, we're happy. We're having our family. Let's see how you do it. Okay. Well, we have a couple interesting um, other projects to show you. One is Christmas ornaments that Those are, are the just same yeah, shapes. Same embroidery designs. Mm -hmm. I love it. Right. And, and they can hang and. Yeah. yeah. And to do that, you're going to hoop a thin layer of batting and one layer of the wool felt. Okay, so when you okay. say the wool felt, we could use wool felt or anything that doesn't fray. That's right. So it could mm -hmm. be any of my leathers or faux leathers or... Right, yeah, for a completely different uh, yeah. yeah, so something that doesn't fray. And then we're going to go and just place the second layer of wool felt on top. And, you know, it'll stick together because of the wool felt and the batting. They, the sure. two sure. uh, surfaces stay together. Okay. And then in one hooping, you can stitch six embroidery designs. And here we have all six stars stitched out in approximately six minutes. <laughs> Pretty fast. Uh, Okay, mm -hmm. then we're going to take and cut those out, is that Yes, it? we would cut them out individually. Because we've got on both sides. Right, so it comes it's through. finished yeah. on both sides. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you would want to have matching bobbin thread in both the top and the bottom. Okay. And then you get to do the fun wire swirls. Okay, so mm -hmm. I, I, that's near and dear to my heart. So oh. you're going to show us how to do that? Yes, um, we're just going to start with 20 gauge uh, wire, and we cut about, oh, six inches, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, something like and that. And then... You just start that one. I think you could probably handle well, this. Well, yeah, what I've made jewelry think? for years. In fact, here's my uh, glasses. This is actually one of my daughter did. She's, she's, she's a chip off the old block. Mm -hmm. So you just start and make your little hook at the end. And then you can just do like you said you did. Right. It's just you go just like this. Turn. Yeah, mm -hmm. until you're tired of going that way, and then, and then we can go the other way. way. Exactly. Right. So you can just say, hey, we'll just switch this around. And mm -hmm. probably I don't need quite that much. Kind of decide. And, I mean, if you decide you don't like what it is, you can start again, and you can just do a few of them and just twist it around. So here we go. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to be even. That's they don't the other have to joy be even. of them. They right. And then you just thread them into the back of the ornament, and you have your ornament. Yeah, and put a mm -hmm. couple that hook into each other, and you can make, right. I guess, yeah. whatever. Let's have a look at this one, okay. because this is what you actually did on that. Right. Now, this is wearables. And, you know, here we have a sweatshirt. This is actually two sweatshirts that were pieced together, and I used the scraps from the green to use the applique pieces here. Perfect. So, yeah, right. we won't even have, we'll do that another day because okay. we're out of time again. It's been so much fun, so join us again next time and we'll do it all over again.
To receive the companion book for this series, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee.